بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيت الأطهار الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله الحكيم في محكم كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاءكم صدق الله العلي العظيم We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi ajalallah ta'ala faraj al-sharif with the blessing of another loud salawat Inshallah, all of us gathering tonight will be amongst his companions and his sincere soldiers with the blessing of another loud salawat. Allahumma ja'alni min ansarihi wa'awanih wa dhabbin anih wal musara'ina ilayh fi qada'i hawa'ijih wal mumtathilina li awamirih wal muhamina anih wa sabiqina ila iradatih some segments of Dua Al-Ahd that we have been prescribed by our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad and As-Sadiq alayhi salam to recite on a daily basis every day after morning prayer and the rewards of the person who recites this Dua will be that inshallah he will have the honor of seeing the Imam of his time or her time and if they die before the reappearance of the Imam happens, when the Imam returns and reappears, angels will come to his or her grave and they will tell this deceased, you have the opportunity to go back alive, to come back to this world and aid your Imam is up to you to make the decision. Within this dua, we started last night saying one important responsibility we have toward the Imam and one thing that Imams of Ahlul Bayt السلام, many of them have told you and I to do during the occultation of the Imam of our time is to pray for him pray for the reappearance of the Imam praying for hastening the reappearance of the Imam we see this hadith not once not twice not three times not from one imam not from two imams many of the imams have told us to pray for hastening the reappearance of the imam and we see so much emphasis on praying and doing dua for the reappearance of the imam as we mentioned last night every day at least 100 times we can do it when we leave the house when we come back to the house driving to school to work coming back before dinner table, before lunch, in Qunut, after, after Salah, and so on and so forth. We have to find any opportunity to do Dua for the Imam of our time. May Allah hasten his reappearance. Within one Dua that we have been prescribed to read, Dua Al-Ahad, when we read the Dua, inshallah, for those who have started, I know some of the community members have already started, during the month of Ramadan, it's a blessing month to start something, to initiate something. This dua, when you read it, if you don't understand Arabic, make sure you read the translation. Same thing for Ziyarat Ali Yasin that we have been prescribed to read. Beautiful Ziyarah, amazing Ziyarah. In it has Usul al-Deen, has Furu al-Deen. It has our belief completely within this one Ziyarah. Duas and Ziyarah they are both tools how Imam communicated with you and I and taught us our religion. Imam Zain Abidin salam, Imam Sajjad, during his time, he was not, he didn't have the ability to give lecture and educate people under very, very, very strict surveillance from Bani Umayyah. So how he fulfilled his right upon his constituents and the Shia was through dua. So we see within the ad'iyah, every dua is a school by itself. It teaches us a lot of stuff. One of them is dua makaram al-akhlaq, which we have spent almost 70 sessions talking about it and we have not finished one dua, one school by Imam Zain Abidin by the name of dua makaram al-akhlaq. 
coming back. Dua al ahad. Some segment of it we talked about it last night, and inshallah we'll continue tonight. And we go to the importance of the dua for the Imam of our time. Allahumma ja'alni min ansarih. Oh Allah, make me of his supporters. We talked about it last night. Wa'awanih wa an His sponsors and his defenders. And we said defending him. We have to know the way people are attacking Imam Zaman Ajlullah Ta'ala for Sharif is not that much physical this day and age that we are living. It's more spiritual. It's more toward aqa'at of the Imam. Every day somebody comes within our school of thought, Oh, I am Imam Mahdi. Oh, how can Imam be alive? We see from non-Shia so much people trying to bring misconceptions and deviate our youth how can a person live this long? Who said he's available? How can we benefit him? And misconceptions about Imam Mahdi, if you research it, unfortunately, it's in mass. So this day and age, within this era that we are living, our responsibility is to defend the Imam mentally. Making sure we are aware of all the narrations, all the verses of Quran that we can support our argument of him being alive, number one. Of his reappearance, number two. Of aqeed of us that he is the one who give us the rizq with Allah's permission. He is the one who creates with Allah's permission. And so on and so forth. Our aqeed, our no knowledge of him, we have to increase. وَالْمُسَارِعِينَ إِلَيْهِ فِي قَضَاءِ حَوَائِجِهِ And those who hurry in carrying out his instruction. We talked about it last night also. Tonight. وَالْمُمْتَثِلِينَ لِأَوَامِرِهِ Oh Allah, make me of those who comply with his orders. With an army, we have the general. Whatever general says, it has to be done. You ask question, give me sit-ups, give me push-ups. You don't ask question within the army. Oh Allah, make me of those people who comply with his order. Within our faith, we're allowed to ask question. We have been encouraged to ask question, to ask and gain knowledge and learn. When you have it, when the Imam says, do it, خلاص, I'll do it. What are his orders? We talked about him, one of them last night. It's his orders, as we said, the order of the Imam of our time is from his father, from his father, from his father, from Rasulullah. All of them, كُلُّهُمْ نُورٌ واحد. All of them, they are one light. Where Imam Zubayr al-Bayt says that it is obligate you must follow a marja' taqlid. Within our furu' ad deen within our practices of religion, which we don't know how, we have to go to marja' taqlid. And as we mentioned last night, some people take it lightly. Some people thinking that marja' taqlid and the concept of taqlid it's something new. And some people, even thinkers within our faith, they have passed away, but unfortunately their legacy is still alive. That following a marja' taqlid, we are doing as a monkey. They mention in their books, and they are thinkers. That why we do taqlid? Why should we do taqlid? Monkey does taqlid. Taqlid means to imitate, to follow someone. We see you go in front of a monkey, you do something in front of them, and they, they do the same thing, they imitate you. So they come and compare this to this. We brought one hadith last night from the Imam, where Imam tells Aban, sit in, in the masjid and give fatwa. So even during the Imam of our, the Imams were present, they had fuqaha, they had people who give fatwa. A person would come to one of the Imams, and said, Imam, I come from a long, long, long way. I have questions. Every time I have questions, I don't have WhatsApp or Imam to WhatsApp you or Viber you or message you 1400 years ago. How can I get to know my religion? Imam says, in your city, there is a knowledgeable person by the name of X. Every time that you have question, you don't have to come to Medina to ask me. You go ahead and ask him. He will answer you. He gives you the fatwa. Because we Ahlul Bayt have taught them, and you go and ask them, and they will answer you. So when the Imam is there, the concept of taqlid is there. 
people who didn't have access to the imams, they would go to the representative of the imams within their own city or the knowledgeable person and they will ask. And then we have a hadith. فَأَمَّا from Imam Hassan al-Askari فَأَمَّا مَنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْفُقَهَاءِ And then those who are fuqaha, faqih is the one who spends 30 years, 35 years, 40 years within the hawza, within seminary, and they gain the knowledge of Islam. They gain the knowledge of Arabic. Then they gain the knowledge of logic. They gain the knowledge of hadith. They gain the knowledge of tafsir of Quran. They gain the knowledge of everything within the jurisprudence. And then Imam comes and gives criteria. He is protecting his nafs. His faith within his nafs is protected. He doesn't let his religion to be deviated by people. He protects his religion. His nafs says do something, he does the opposite. That's what we have to do. My nafs says do extra, do this sin, I say no. So after he's knowledgeable, faqih, he protects himself, he protects his deen, he goes against his nafs, those, that's that nafs that encourages him to commit sin, muti'an li amri mawlah, he follows the, the order of imam of the time. فَلِلْعَوَامِ أَنْ يُقَلِّدُوهُ The mass should follow him. This is it. One hadith is sufficient. You don't need hundreds of ahadith for something to be established. No, one hadith, that's enough. And we have all of these maraja, Shaykh al Mufid, and onwards, all the other maraja. They do not understand religion. A new person comes in within this past couple of decades, he writes books and he starts making fun and start questioning taqlid. So, where should we put people get their religion from? So when we read du'a, if you remember last night we say, we do du'a, recitation of du'a is one thing, our action needs to be added to it. Every day I read, Those who comply with his orders, I don't get to know the marja of my time. The knowledgeable marja that I should go to. The one that I should follow his risale. I don't do it. Oh Allah, I want to comply with his orders. But I think I know religion better than a person who spent 35, 40, 45 years within the seminaries and reading a hadith and reading Arabic grammar and Quran and knowledge and tafsir and so on and so forth. I know religion better than them. Why? Because I came to America. I came to European country. I know English. I'm being exposed to the 21st century knowledge. I know better than them my religion. The religion is, shouldn't be like this. It's not like that. In order, this is one order. One order of the Imam that we must follow marja within our jurisprudence. And the rest of them. How can we know Imam's order? Those books, four books that we have introduced that are in Farsi, that are in Arabic, that is in Urdu, it's in English. The first book that inshallah, we start reading it soon. Very soon, starting tonight, Makyal al Makarim. Very important to read. Makyal al Makarim. Al Ghaybah al Nu'mani. And Muntakhab al Athar. And Kamal al Deen and Tamam al Ni'mah. Those who have received it, inshallah, they have downloaded and they have started reading it. If not, please get in contact with me. I'll send you the books. They are PDF online and phone, and you can just read it. So we have to get to know what is Imam's order and for me to comply with it. an those who protect him. ila iradatih, those who precede others to implementing his will. What Imam wants from me? Do I know it? If I don't know it, how can I perceive the other one in implementing it? That person knows it. I mean, you can put it silence and then four zeros. Let's have a loud salawat. So I have to know what is his will. I come every day in the morning. I read the dua, don't know the translation. And I go with my life, have nothing to do with the Imam of our time. It doesn't work. 
Dua is a segment. Action is another segment. Both have to come hand in hand together. Dua, action. Dua, action. Dua, action. Dua without action is not going to work. I sit all day in my home. Oh Allah, increase my sustenance. I read all the duas. Oh Allah, increase my sustenance. And I don't go for, find a job. I don't submit my resume. I don't search online. I'm not going to find a job. Nobody's going to come knock on my door. Okay, here's a job for you. No, I do dua and I go work for it. So when we read the dua, وَالسَّابِقِينَ إِلَىٰ إِرَادَتِهِ Oh Allah, make me of those who proceed others to implementing his will what is his will what he wants to, when he comes what is he going to do isn't it he that he will implement islam he will apply islam completely so now we have the responsibility how many of us we are spreading islam how many of us do we know islam in order for us to spread it if I don't know Islam, if I don't know the religion, if I don't know, if I don't know the muharramat and wajibat, if I don't have knowledge of Quran, if I don't have knowledge of hadith, how can I spread it? How can I spread it if I don't know anything? I need to know in order for me to spread it. This is the will of the Imam. Imam, when he comes, he will establish justice. Justice according to the teachings of Islam. I need to know it. So, I just gave you a key. From tomorrow, when you read Dua Al-Ahad, inshallah, read the translation. You can just go online, duas.org, has the Arabic text and the translation. When I read it, I read segment by segment and I start thinking about it. And I start doing one thing from the Dua on a daily basis. Every day one thing, every day one thing, every day one thing. And we'll see how our life will become similar and what Imam wants us to do. So what is the benefit? What is the benefit of doing dua for the Imam? We talked about two benefits last night. We talk about the rest inshallah tonight. And we have to conclude with this topic of dua. Inshallah from tomorrow will be our response, other response, our responsibilities during the era of the occultation. But inshallah, if you read Kitab Mekyalul Makarim in it, there is 99 benefits for the person who does dua for the Imam of our time. 99 benefits. It's mentioned in this two volume books or one volume that you have it. Beautiful. Read it and then you will start appreciating. When you do dua, you feel fresh. You feel something else because you see you are getting all of these benefits without knowing it. it just, and that will encourage you to keep doing dua and dua and dua because you want to get more of these 99 benefits. As we said last night, one of the benefits is when you do dua for the Imam, Imam does dua for you back. What other benefit do you need? This is it. This is enough. If Imam does dua for me, my life will be completely changed. That's why Imams of Ahl Bayt said, increase in the amount of dua that you do for the Imam, for the Ta'jeel al-Faraj. Next benefit, we talked two last night. One, Imam will pray for us. Tonight, Al-Fawz bi shafa'at bi yawm al On the day of judgment, we believe in intercession. We believe we must try our best to be good. Shafa'at doesn't mean I'm gonna just commit sin, on the day of Qiyamah, Ahl al-Bayt will intercede for us. No. There is no part of the Shia belief that say, okay, go do whatever you want to do. Commit all sorts of sins. Don't do any of the wajibat. And Ahl al-Bayt will, will intercede for you. No. We have to do our best to be good people. But maybe our good deeds is not sufficient enough to get us into heaven. If Ahl al-Bayt will, they will intercede for us. Allah gives them a voucher to intercede. And we talk within our Friday youth session, we talk almost four or five hours about shafa'a, bringing verses of Quran, proving that our belief of shafa'a comes from Quran. If we start doing dua for the reappearance of the Imam, on the day of Qiyamah, Imam inshallah will intercede for us. Where do we get this idea from? A hadith from 
رسول الله محمد صلى الله عليه وآله قال رسول الله This is in Kafi Sharif Volume 2 Page 508 قال رسول الله ما من مؤمن دعا للمؤمنين والمؤمنات إلا رد الله عز وجل عليه مثل الذي دعا لهم Anytime that you dua for a believer For example, I have a need I have a financial problem And I see my brother or my sister has a financial problem Oh Allah, grant them their needs Give them, help them financially Rasulullah says when you do dua for them Allah will return the dua for you too Don't we see this within the life of Fatima al-Zahra Salamullah alayha When she kept praying Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam said that we kept seeing my, our mother Fatima to Zahra kept praying for our neighbors, our neighbors, everything dua for the neighbors. When we do dua for others, Allah is more merciful to accept our dua for others and not to apply it to ourselves. And then, the rest of the hadith I'm skipping. A servant has been dragged to hellfire. Our understanding is that his calculation has been done. Basically, he got to the judgment. The verdict was released that he doesn't have enough good deeds to be taken to heaven. His bad deeds are more heavier. The scale of the bad deeds are heavier. He needs to be taken to hellfire. إِنَّ الْعَبْدِ لَا يُؤْمَرْ بِهِ إِلَى النَّارِ they drag him to hellfire. فيصحب, they drag him. فيقول المؤمنون والمؤمنات And people are seeing this. Other believers see another person is being dragged to hellfire. فيقول المؤمنون والمؤمنات يا رب هذا الذي كان يدعو لنا فشفعنا فيه فيشفعهم الله عز وجل فيه Fayanju. What a beautiful hadith. How much is our religion is religion of hope and is not religion of despair and losing hope. It's all about being hopeful of Allah's mercy, but at the same time being cautious of Allah's punishment. So a believer standing, they see another person is being dragged to hellfire. These mu'mineen and mu'minat, they say, Oh Allah, this person on earth when he was alive, he did dua for us. His good deed is not sufficient for him to, be to, to go to heaven. His bad deed is heavier. Oh Allah, allow us, because he did dua for us, allow us to intercede for him. Allah will allow these mu'mineen to intercede for him. He will be saved from hellfire. So if a believer, a normal believer, has the chance, has the power to intercede for a person who has been dragged, but only because he did dua for them. Allah gives them this, gave, gives them this opportunity to intercede. If you and I increase in the amount of dua that we do for the reappearance of the Imam on the day of Qiyamah, the Imam will not intercede for us. Or Imam doesn't have that much power as a believer. Doesn't he? So doesn't this give us more courage? Doesn't this give us more incentive for us to keep doing dua? Nights of Qadr came and passed, but we still have on the day of Eid, the night of Eid, the rest of the month of Ramadan, which we still have. Just keep praying for the reappearance of the Imam. Oh Allah, hasten the reappearance of the Imam. Oh Allah, hasten the reappearance of the Imam. Allahumma ajal le waliyak al faraj. Allahumma ajal le waliyak al faraj. Continuously doing dua for the Imam because of these rewards. We're only mentioning three, four of them. Again, go back to the Kitab Bikyar al Makarim. It mentions 99 benefit of doing dua for the Imam, which we don't have time. This needs actually one month of Ramadan, 99 benefits. Every night we cover. Three, four of them until we can cover the whole 99 benefits. Importance of doing dua for, Imam, for Allah to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam. Another benefit. 
the person who does dua abundantly for the reappearance of the Imam. And there are different duas. Dua Faraj is one of them. Dua Al Ahad, 40 days in the morning, one of them. Dua Al Nutba, Friday morning, one of them. Ziyarat Al Yasin, one of them. Dua after Salah, which I'm going to read about it right now, it's one of them. Many duas we have within Mafatih Al Janan, we just have to go search it. Hadith says by Imam Sadiq that men, من قرأ بعد كل فريضة هذا الدعاء فإنه يرى الإمام وعلى آبائه السلام في اليقظة أو في المنام Any person who reads this dua it's a kind of half a, no a quarter of a page dua takes you a minute to read it Imam says anybody who reads this dua after salah he will see the Imam either while he's sleeping in his dream or while he's awake he will see the Imam and that dua is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma ballig maulana sahib al-zaman aynama kaan wa haythu ma kaan and the rest of the dua which we don't have time but you can go search it within Mafatih al-Janan exists different website there are a lot of places that we can go and find when we make it a priority for us to find the duas we'll find it and the more we do it the more we see the benefit last but not least the one who does dua for the reappearance of the Imam, Allah will prolong his life. He will have long life. All of us, we need to have long life. Why? Because within, when we have long life, we can gain more good deeds for Akhirah. I can do more, I can do more Salah. I can do more obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can do more supplications and so on and so forth. I can help people more when I'm alive. When I'm dead, I can't do anything. The hadith says, and Mawlana Sadr alayhi salam wa madmunih, and Nahuma min mu'min yatamanna khidmatuhu, anyone who wishes to serve the Imam, wa yad'u li ta'jeer farajah, and he does dua for the faraj of Imam, illa atahu, illa, that's also, the benefit is, he will come back alive to serve the Imam, and his life will be prolonged. What other benefit do we need? Again, all of these benefits are extra. For me personally, that dua of the Imam for me, if I, when I do Imam, dua for Imam, Imam does it for me, I'm sufficient. That's it for me. I don't need the rest of the 99, 80, 98. This is one enough for me. It has so much value, so much weight for it, in it, that should keep increasing my belief that my dua, let me open the parentheses within a minute, Sheikh, does it matter how much du'a we do? Doesn't matter. Allah has a set. This day, Imam will reappear. Why should we do du'a? And my du'a, one individual person du'a, will help? It will help. Every du'a will help. Every single du'a will help. You know the famous story that Allah planned to punish Bani Israel for X amount of years because of what they did and they the, the punishment started but they got together they learned their lesson and they got together and they said how about we go to the desert we start praying to Allah we start begging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we shed tears we do whatever it is for him to do something the hadith says Allah reduced the punishment with with 170 years they're supposed to be released from the punishment. Another, after 170 years, because of their dua, Allah brought the relief for them 170 years earlier. So, can we change the time of the reappearance of the Imam? Yes. Can it become sooner? Yes. How? With dua, inshallah. Let us raise our hand and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from the fitan and from the seditions of the end of the time with this beautiful dua Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ya Allahu, Ya Rahmanu, Ya Rahim Ya Muqallib al-Qulub, Thabbit Qalbi ala Deenik Ya Allahu, Ya Rahmanu, Ya Rahim Ya Muqallib al-Qulub, Thabbit Qalbi ala Deenik Ya Allahu, Ya Rahmanu, Ya Rahim يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم كن وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا ما شاء الله ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين صلوات